السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا
This is the one ayah in the entire Quran Allah mentions on Allah by name. That's how Allah starts the ayah. Allah says, in connection with the month of Ramadan, this is when the Quran was initially sent down, when the Prophet first received revelation, so Allah by Allah was sent down. At the end of the say, what does Allah say? Allah mentions three specific things. In connection with the purpose of Ramadan, the first one, Allah says, when he took me to the Mayda, to complete the number of days, to complete the fasting as best we can. Different people have different challenges and different health issues, so on and so forth. Allah making things easy for everyone. What Allah is saying here, out of the three things, item number one, to, to complete the number of days. What is the number And then what is number two? What is the number For us to, to, to praise and glorify Allah, to exalt Allah. Because He's the one who guided us to Ramadan, and He's the one who guided us through Ramadan. So I have number one, what is the number Number two, what is the number one? To exalt Allah from a place of appreciation for the guidance that He has given us, especially during that month. How many lives are completely turned around for the better? within the blessed month of Ramadan. That doesn't necessarily mean that a person changes everything in their life. That's not what I'm referring to. That's not, that's not the point. That's not what Allah expects from us. But if they can internally make that U-turn, if they can internally recalibrate that compass for it to rediscover its true norm and to make Allah His Messenger priority number one, how many hearts recalibrate? How many people reconnect with the Quran and the of Ramadan? They find themselves tasting the sweetness of Iman, tasting the sweetness of connecting more and more with the community, with the Book of Allah, with doing as many good deeds as they can within their capacity and trying to avoid bad deeds as best they can. This month is extremely beneficial and it can be extremely pivotal if we treat it as such. So number one, Allah mentions completing the number of days. Number two, when it can be Allah to exalt Allah for the guidance that He's given us. And then what is item number three? This is what I want to specifically zoom in on a little bit briefly today. And so you, this is the plural you, not the singular, but the plural. And so all of you Muslims can be grateful. In connection with this concept of gratitude, let me take a step back and look at what Allah prioritizes more than anything else in the Quran in connection with gratitude. If that's what Allah is prioritizing, then naturally, that should influence me to likewise prioritize those things as best I can. What are the main things that Allah mentions in the Quran in connection with encouraging us to show gratitude, expecting us to show gratitude? And He mentions that very few people actually show that gratitude. The ability to hear, the ability to see, the intellect that Allah has given us. Allah has given us these incredible things, so we may be grateful. He gave those things to us, these incredible blessings to us, these priceless blessings to us. If somebody lost their hearing, what would they be willing to do? What would they be willing to pay? to get it back. If somebody even has a cold and their hearing is uncomfortable, it's muscled for even a week or two, it really throws things off. I know I experienced this recently, and I'm sure some of you have as well. It's very strange when you can't hear normally. You know, they say that a healthy person, they have a thousand wishes, but a sick person, they don't have one. Just want to be healthy. 
While one mentions these three things in connection with gratitude, the ability to hear, the ability to see, the ability to think and reflect, the intellect that Allah has blessed us with. So in connection with Ramadan, let me take a step back and think regarding these blessings specifically, but it's not limited to these three. Reflecting on these three blessings, which are extremely pivotal, we, we use them all the time. If Allah has blessed us with these things, we understand that some may not be able to hear. But if Allah takes one thing away, then He'll replace it with even more in return. So if someone is hard of hearing, then Allah will take what He normally would have given them and place that, that blessing elsewhere. He'll take what he would have given them, and then he'll, it's like repurposing. So if somebody is blind, for example, then the hearing becomes extra sharp. Allah may have taken one thing, but he didn't leave them empty-handed. Allah is too generous to do so. Allah gave them something else in return. When I take a step back and I think and I reflect about these three abilities, specifically, I should reflect how am I using this ability to hear in general and especially in preparation for Ramadan? How am I preparing my ears for Ramadan? How, how am I preparing my eyes for Ramadan? How am I preparing my heart for Ramadan? My mind, my, my, my ability to think and reflect, my intellect. Allah mentions in Surah Sabbath. A statement that should motivate us and inspire us. Allah mentions to the family of David, the Prophet David, and this is within the passage towards the beginning of the surah in which Allah mentions incredible blessings that He gave them to Dawood and his family. One of the incredible blessings Allah mentions here, but then Allah mentions that he made iron soft for him. Within this passage, Allah mentions, after highlighting these incredible, very unique, powerful blessings that he's given them, now what's the expectation in return? Allah didn't say something specifically connected to knowledge here. Allah mentions something specifically connected to action. Allah is calling them to action. Allah is calling them to show their gratitude to Him with their actions. There is definitely a time and a place for thanking Allah with our words, saying, Alhamdulillah, so on and so forth. No question. Let's take it a step further. Let's show Allah our gratitude with our actions. I can thank Allah for my hearing, which, which I should do. That's good. I should thank Allah with my words for the ability to see. Let me take it a step further. Let me set my game up. How can I use my ears in connection with different good deeds to show Allah with my actions how grateful I am for that blessing He's given me? The same goes for all other blessings Allah has given us. So when Allah mentions these three things, this is where we start when we think of gratitude, it's not where we end. When we think about my ears, when we think about my vision, when we think about the intellect of Allah's blessings, and when we think about the wealth of Allah's given me, when we think about the health of Allah's given me, when we think about the vehicle of Allah's given me, the home of Allah's given me, the good friends of Allah's given me, the good teachers of Allah's given me, the incredible students, the local messages, so on and so forth. When we put it or add a spin, on our lives, everything changes for the better. All of a sudden, when we think about hearing and seeing and money and work and school, so on and so forth, there's this added layer of depth that the Quran gives us, that Islam gives us. It adds meaning to so many things. Now it's not just two ears and I use them to listen. Two eyes and I use them to see. But when we think quranically, let me use my eyes to look at the good in people. Let me 
Let me not use my eyes to seek out the saints and people and nitpick at this little thing and that little thing and judge this person for this and judge that person for that. When I do that, that causes my heart to rust. If I use my ears to, to listen for different mistakes that other people have done, let me listen for the, the hot gossip that everyone is talking about. Is that how a responsible believer should show their thanks to Allah for that priceless blessing he's given them? We know the answer is wrong. So let's reflect on how we use these blessings and all the other blessings Allah has given us. The ones that we're aware of and the ones that we're not aware of. How are we using them already to bring us closer to Allah? And if we're not doing that, how can we change that to use them in ways to bring us closer to Allah? Let's think more deeply. How can I prepare for Ramadan from now in connection with these blessings and all the other blessings? How am I using my money? Have I given anything to a noble cause recently? How am I using my time? There's a famous hadith. Many of all of us know it. The Prophet said that there are two blessings. That many people they don't take advantage of them. Good health and free time. When the Prophet mentions that, it may have been centuries ago, but the feeling is like here and now he's telling us, use your free time wisely. Use your good health wisely. It doesn't mean that you're going to go and use all of your free time for noble causes. That's not the expectation. To go and use your health and your strength all the time to help people with everything. No, that's not the expectation. Our deen is very practical. The son of the prophet is very practical, very realistic on a day-to-day basis. Let us think, how are we using the blessing Allah has given us? And how can we use the blessings Allah has given us. We ask Allah to make us from among the few. We ask Allah to make us from among the grateful. We ask Allah to help us to prepare for the blessing of the Allah for now. We ask Allah to polish our hearts. We ask Allah to clean our hearts. And we ask Allah to make it easy for us to come closer to Him, closer to His Prophet, and closer to His Book of Quran.
give me 30 seconds after the prayer for a very, very brief fundraising for the sake of helping those struggling in Islam. For Islam and for our We ask Allah to make it easy for us to help them. We ask Allah to help them. Allah is the most generous. We ask Allah to help them. Say Ameen. And we ask Allah to help us to help them as best we can. They have rights over us, and we have to do what we can to help them as best we can. We ask Allah to make it easy for us to do so. We ask Allah for His blessings. We ask Allah for His guidance and forgiveness. We ask Allah to protect our youth and to guide them and to elevate them. We ask Allah to help them remain on the straight path. And we ask Allah to help us as entire communities to do what we can to facilitate that for them, to help them stay on the right path, to help them stay on the straight path. Our turner of hearts, we ask you to keep our hearts firm on your deen. Our bena hati na fi dunya hasna, wa fi al-akhirah fi hasna, wa fi al-akhirah fi hasna. Our bena hati na min al-mulk rahma, wa hayda na min al-mulk rashida. Wa ma amiru illa li'abdu Allah, wa amiru zina al-fina al-nafaa, wa yuqinu salata wa yuqinu zakaa, wa la yuqinu.